and joining me right now is Michigan Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Dingell. She's the co-chairwoman of the House Democratic Policy and Communications Committee. Congresswoman, it's good to see you this morning. First, give me your reaction to the good president's morning. plans, which he laid out yesterday. You know, I'm going to say several things. One, he didn't say a word about any of the workers that have been furloughed, about getting the government open again. And I'm just meeting with so many workers who are desperate. They're about to have a second. Next Friday, they'll miss their second paycheck. Yeah. We've got to reopen the government. <coughs> I'm sorry, Maria. Yeah, no, Too much no, no speaking problem. outdoors. Uh, maybe, maybe have, have some water if, if you can while you're there. <coughs> Um, I know the feeling. I've had a cough in the last couple of days. But, Congresswoman, l let me ask you. You say that he didn't uh, mention the workers. Isn't that the whole point of this proposal that he put on the table? The whole point is to open the government and get his, uh, get his border security well, uh, uh, money for the wall. Because, you know, he, th this proposal that the president put on the table yesterday extends the temporary protective services for DACA recipients, helps DACA recipients, funds disaster relief, funds humanitarian aid for migrants, and of course, uh, in all of this, it ends the government shutdown. That was the point of it, Congresswoman. Well, first of all, what he did was put on the table things that have already been rejected by both the House and the Senate before. Well, we are going to next week actually, but they have been rejected. Yeah. They're the same. What about the old Bridge proposals? Act? What about the Bridge Act? Because I believe the Democrats voted for the Bridge <coughs> Act, and many of these proposals were part of the Bridge Act, Congresswoman. You know what's going to happen next week, Maria? We're going to put on the House floor six bills which have been negotiated by Senate and House. Uh, uh, conference committees to reopen the government, reopen those six other agencies, then let's get in the room and have a real discussion about how we keep this nation safe. You know, I don't know any Democrat that doesn't care about keeping our nation safe. We do no. need to have border security. Well, I, let, and me, we let me need stop to you there. Let me, let me stop you there, Congresswoman. The wall. Because you say that you don't know any Democrats who don't want border security, and yet none of them voted for Kate's law, none of them voted to end sanctuary city status, uh, none of them voted for the DACA plan that the president put on the table. So can you really say that, that they're for border security when they haven't voted for any of the above? You know, yes, I can say that. And I'm going to talk about how we need to support actual policy that works. How do you keep our border safe? How do you make sure? We have 3,000 open positions right now for Custom and Border Patrol. We need to fill those positions. You know, if you want to talk about drugs coming into this country, which the president talked about yesterday, 90% yeah. of cocaine, 88% of opiates, and 80, uh, 88 and of opioids, and 88 Eighty percent of fentanyl comes in at the ports. Yeah. We're doing nothing to keep our gonna, ports safe. We're going to take a quick break, but with all due respect, everything you're saying we've heard from the president, and that's the reason he put the proposal on the table. I want to take a short break. I want to show you when we come back the map of the wall that separates Tijuana and San Diego because it's okay. real compelling. Stay with us more as we get your thoughts on also Special Counsel Robert Mueller's statement disputing BuzzFeed's report uh, that claimed the president directed his former personal attorney Michael Cohen to lie. We'll be right back. And we're back with Congresswoman Debbie Dingell. And Congresswoman, uh, I want you to talk to me a bit about why uh, the speaker and your colleagues are so against some kind of fencing or barrier on our southern border. In fact, Nancy Pelosi has a border wall right in her own state. We're going to look at this uh, map right here of Tijuana uh, and the wall that separates Tijuana and San Diego. You've got about three million people in Tijuana and three million people in San Diego. Why wasn't one of her first uh, points on the agenda to tear down this wall if it's immoral? So. What I want is border security, which I think means, and I think most Democrats mean, let's all get in the room and talk about what that border security is. There are many parts along that border that a wall doesn't even work. There's rivers, etc. We have new technology out. We have drones. Yeah. We have sensors. We should be using all of it, Maria. Absolutely. So why do we have to close six other departments? And why, let's get in regular order. Yeah. Let's get in the room. Let's all agree on border security, a package that will truly keep us sure. safe, and let's reopen the government. I think you make a lot of good points, because there are areas of the country where we don't need a wall, probably, like near the Rio Grande, well, there, where there's this open space, where if a migrant, you know, if, if an illegal 
uh, immigrant comes and, and, and tries to hide in that area, he'll probably or she'll probably be found pretty quickly because it's miles and miles of, of open space. But I want to get your take specifically on the southern border and specifically this wall in Tijuana because this is a very tense, uh, dense area, rather, with three million people in one outside and another three million in the other side. If you were to tear that wall down, do you think that eventually those people would just assimilate and those three million people in Tijuana would basically just become citizens in the U.S.? I mean, not First citizens off, legally, obviously, I, I, but just assimilate into the population. Would that happen? First of all, nobody is saying we don't need border security. Why no, aren't no, we Congressman, harming I'm specifically more... asking you about the border in, in Nancy Tijuana. Pelosi's state. Right now, they need more. They're not even having to even fill all the positions to keep that border that border safe. Should we that need to wall be, be torn more down? Technology. Should that wall be no, torn down? No, I don't. I, I haven't been to visit the site. I don't know all the specifics of it. And well, let me give you some specifics. Let me, let me give you some specifics, Congresswoman, right, because we've got the border apprehensions just from that wall just in the month of November 2018. And in California, there was 7,764 apprehensions, nearly 7,800 border apprehensions in California alone just for the month. November last year, total southwest border apprehensions for November, nearly 52,000. I guess that tells you that that wall works. Would you say that that wall in Nancy Pelosi's state is working? I, it, there are places that it is appropriate, How and that's that wall, why that it's specific been wall before. in Tijuana and San Diego. Because I haven't visited, I'm not mm. going to say for sure, but I'm not going to say it should come down either. I'm one thing I've learned about when you are seasoned: don't comment when you don't have all the facts and don't know if you're walking yeah. into something you shouldn't say. But I'll wonder, tell you what: the next time you talk to me, I'm going to study it. And yeah, have I, the I just wonder why Nancy Pelosi is so against it, and your colleagues are so against it when we know that there's a wall in her own state. Do you find that hypocritical? But, you know, I, Let me ask you. Let's take a step back, Congressman. Let's take a step back. And just try That's to understand better whether or not this is all politics. Because we know that many of your colleagues voted for a border wall twice. Uh, that includes Nancy Pelosi, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, uh, in terms of the need to protect the American citizens. We know that. Now, Donald Trump has the idea. He made it a campaign promise, and he said all throughout the campaign, build that wall a number of times. Is that the reason? that you're against the wall and your colleagues are against the wall because it was now Donald Trump's campaign promise. First of all, I've been really clear. I don't think compromise is a dirty word, and I have always said that. I do believe that we need to have a conversation about border security, right. and the border security is a much larger topic. Do I think we're political right now? I absolutely do, and I think it's ridiculous. I think that there are, we need to reopen the government. There are so many services that aren't getting done now from uh, people that need help and the people that aren't being paid. I get, I mean, I had a mother this week call me who's been deemed an essential uh, service employee. Her, she doesn't have, hasn't been paid in a month, can't pay for her child's daycare. Daycare is kicking her out. She's losing the space. Yeah. She can't take time off because she's been deemed essential. Yeah. She's working Con Denny's Con at midnight. You, you just That's said not a moment right ago, either. You just said a moment ago we have to have a conversation. Isn't that what we're doing? I, I, isn't that why well, the government just shut down? No, no, no. But, the, I mean... That's why, you know, Nancy Pelosi is in Washington. The president has put something on the table yesterday. This is what they're doing, right? They're having a conversation. And a moment well, ago, you I said hope... that the president hasn't spoken about the thousands of people who are not getting paid. The president signed a bill that will provide hundreds of thousands of government employees with back pay after the shutdown ends. He just signed that bill last okay, week. But... Can I give you some real world? I'm talking to these people every single day. They yeah. can't, the TSA guys in Detroit can't pay for the gas to go to work. Mm -hmm. I, I talked to a Secret Service agent yeah. who is putting his life and willing to take a bullet, and his kids are suffering. He can't explain yeah. to his kids. Yeah, I, I, think both both, mom and I, I think we both agree. I think on we this. absolutely and, you know, agree. I think the and I issue. hope we get people. Is it, what, what we need to do is get in regular order. We have mm. six bills that have been negotiated, agreed to by Senate and House yeah. Republicans and Democrats. You know what I think Let's people get frustrated that. with? I think no matter what side you're on, you just want to see some honesty. 
And you want to see honesty, whether it be at the border wall or whether it be in terms of what went on in the 2016 election or this past week, BuzzFeed coming out with a report saying that the president directed Michael Cohen to lie for him to Congress. And then the special counsel, in a very rare move, had to come out and say that report is inaccurate. What did you think about that? I don't know what to think, and I'm, uh, you know me, I am someone that's very blunt. He didn't totally deny the report. I don't no, have the facts. He said it's inaccurate, is, uh, what, is what the special counsel said. He said it was inaccurate. Said. Inaccurate. So, so should Adam we continue the, with all of this stuff going out there to, in the zeitgeist to make people think, uh, on the one hand, the president said to lie, on the other hand, you know, the president said that, you know, he, he, he uh, just wants the wall and doesn't, and the Democrats want border security. I mean, Honesty, I think, is what we all want. Uh, we, on you know, both one sides of the reasons I think one of the reasons I think Donald Trump got elected was because the American people were tired of, of partisan bickering, and they thought that it would bring a change. Unfortunately, yeah. it hasn't brought a change. I think you're exactly right. They're tired of seeing this. Yeah. We got to get in the room, and we got a yeah. brand new class well, with a lot we'll of see. younger. Well, well, uh, there's a lot of division there. We got to talk more about that when you come back, Congressman. Well, good to see you. Thank bring you. people together. Thank you, Work Congressman together. John Ratcliffe Thank is up you. next on the FISA abuse bombshell. Stay with us.